producers definitely need to assess the costs and you know weigh the benefits so that they know what their ROI um, is and kind of do that on an ongoing basis to make sure that the things in ag tech that they're investing in um, do actually provide them value. Um, but you know, at the, at the same time, like don't stand, don't sit on the sidelines. Um, I think take advantage of, um, you know, what is out there um, so that you can help create the direction of, of what ag tech is. Hey, hey, I'm Shay Keister, and I'm your host for the Casual Cattle Conversations podcast, where we connect you with members of the beef industry who can help you build a more profitable operation. As you listen to each episode, be sure to set an intention for the show. What do you want to get out of it, and how do you want to use this information to make changes on your operation? If you're looking for more ranching resources outside of what's being shared on these podcast episodes, sign up for my free weekly newsletter. I'll send ranching information and podcast episodes straight to your inbox every week. In addition to that, you will also receive a free PDF with 22 ranch management tips from the gurus who have been on my show. The link to sign up for that is in the show notes. With that, let's hear from our guest today and discover how we can improve the beef industry and our own unique cattle operations. Alrighty, well, we have Alex and Keenan on the show today, and I'm going to have each of them introduce themselves. But uh, to kind of preface this interview, we're going to talk about the Cattle ID app, but as a broader topic, we're going to talk about ag tech and what that means for beef production, because we see a lot of technology in the farming space, and it's very much increasing in the beef space, but uh, we're going to look at what that really means for beef producers and what they really need to understand about the beef space today, or beef technology space today. Words are hard, I guess. So with that, all right, Alex, let's uh, start with you, and let's hear about your background in ag tech and the beef industry. Yeah. Hey, Shay. Thanks for having us. Um, My name is Alex Heine. I am from Northeast Nebraska. I grew up on my family's commercial cattle feeding and farming uh, operation there. Um, Ever since I was young, I was, you know, very interested in new technology. I actually considered going to college for computer science, Uh, but my passion for the cattle business outweighed that. Um, after attending UNL, I had the opportunity to join a startup there in Lincoln, Nebraska called Quantified Ag, uh, working on cattle health monitoring and um, improving animal health in the feedlot and backgrounding spaces. Um, that's what led me into this role today uh, as the head of product for Cattle ID. It's been a ton of fun learning more about um, the cow-calf segment and meeting with ranchers, learning about all of um, their various uh, challenges and opportunities in that space. Well, that's pretty cool, Alex. And uh, New Stockyard Group and Cattle ID are lucky to have you. You have quite the experience in ag tech, so that's pretty neat. Keenan, yeah, do you want to talk about uh, your background in ag and how you're in the ag tech space? You're more the you're going to be the techie guy on the show, so we might be asking you to explain. Uh, some of your vocabulary a little bit. <laughs> that is great. Ask away because yeah, I, uh, from that techie side, I actually write my start doesn't come in ag tech, right? I actually have two different paths. So for those, as we start, right, my name is Keenan Havocati and with new stockyard group, I am what is called a lead developer. That just means I'm one of the like head nerds that writes code. Right. And so a lot of what people want and see and do through the app comes through me. Right. Uh, and so for me previously, right, I have had two separate routes. I actually, by degree, I am a mathematician, um, all the way through the, the PhD, it was math. And then after that ended up taking a slight turn and going into tech from there and mainly worked in what I would call like meta tech, which is like the modern new age type startup where you're just working on fully developed, like online things. Um, but also previously before all of that. I had actually worked uh, on the like processing and post-processing side with beef working for Piedmontese and dealing with like animal breakdowns and distribution um, after the animal has lived its long full life, right? So now with 
you stock your group, I actually got pulled in and got to like merge these two paths. Right. And I got, I got pulled in as an old boss from a company called Huddle, H U D L, reached out uh, with a cool opportunity as he was working on awesome, right? Like machine learning, artificial intelligence stuff for a new stockyard group. Got me enticed. And so with that, I am here. And uh, it's been interesting to learn because most of my previous experience, right, had been after, after life. Um, so it's cool to see now the complete opposite end. <laughs> <laughs> at the start of life, right? Um, and you know, because of that, not a, not a ton of experience, but a, a little bit there of getting out there and just you know getting our hands dirty. Well, that's awesome to hear, Keenan. And uh, so as we talk today, I think it'd be interesting to hear how, you know, we talk about how cattle producers are looking at all these traits, and we understand that the importance of collecting data, finding these traits, ultimately it impacts their bottom line, improves their profitability, whether that improves efficiency and um, just overall um, uniformity of an operation. So I think to start there, like starting at the beginning, Alex, do you want to talk a little bit about what Cattle ID is so that those listening understand kind of what specific ag tech a egg technology application we're speaking about today and going to use as the example. Yeah. So um cattle ID really um you know started like I said earlier, you know, from from a consortium that basically said, hey, look, um the the cattle industry, specifically the rancher, is very underserved, especially when it comes to um, managing their data, tracking that information. Um, and as we dug in deeper, uh, we basically just started with something really simple, which was a digital calving book. You know, <laughs> it seems like, you know, anymore, you always have your phone with you. So it's like, let's just build um, an app that allows producers to easily capture and track this information, uh, but then also share that information with others in their operation. Um, you know, um, there's still a lot of ranchers that are using purely uh, paper records. Um, but there's more and more like people getting familiar. And I think that's just having availability to phones and, and always having them with you, but uh, using SMS, sheets, um, notes in their phone. Um, and we simply are just starting by creating a place for those records uh, to be digitized and accessed in one spot. Um, you know, now we're starting to get to the point where we've created a really easy and friendly way for them to do that. Um, and now we're bringing new operational insights, uh, herd insights into dashboards and filtering tools, um, and really just learning as we go, learning from the customer, what, what are their most important needs, um, pain points, desires, what are the things that um, can help make their operation better and more profitable? And um, yeah, those are the things that we're looking to build next. So how, so on the tech side, because there are so many different um, traits that can be measured mm -hmm. on any beef operation. How do you decide what goes into the app or what's going to be valuable in that? Because you can't, having everything would be a giant monster right away. Like for those of you who are on the audio, you're watching Keenan shake his head at the thought yes. of having everything on there. <laughs> it's a scary thought. No. Um, and I'm sure people will, uh, maybe not in the ag tech space, but they've experienced an app that is, has everything, but because it has everything, it has nothing. Um, and so, yeah, you touched on a, a very key issue that is actually at the center of a lot of our conversations when discussing anything involving the app, the product, the company, the few, everything, right? Where there's this balance between what I'll call like generalizability. That is, every operation is its own operation, right? They have, they might have specific traits that only they follow, but there's this hope that this singular app can be used by many operations simultaneously. That's how one, we can get a like collective consortium of information that can be shared and can actually help bring information back into the entire field. But it, so, right, there's that balance between generalizability and that hidden specificity that comes with unique traits for each operation. 
So what we really focus on right now is trying to find that middle ground, right? We're not trying to offer pure specificity, which is where you just throw everything out there. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're also not trying to make sure that it's pure generalizability. And so how we tackle that is we typically, we take all the information we have. We see what few fields float to the top and are commonly used. And then for us right now, something we do is we offer a couple extras that allow more general feedback. It's things like, you'll think about like notes, like free form writing of notes mm -hmm. or a more um, modern comment system, right? Things that are similar to that free form. The downside, right? With very well-defined fields that we'll talk about, like tag, or maybe you have an alternate ID color that you can start, um, you can actually report on those. It makes it a little bit more difficult once we get into the free form stuff, but that's part of that generalizability specificity, like trade off. You can trade off like allowing reports for allowing more information to be shared to a broader like audience. And so that's, yeah, key. So Alex, you, you're a little more on like the user side a little bit. Would you say that like having a more generalized app is almost more effective and useful for cattle producers, even if it does limit some of those special specializations and unique points? Yeah, I mean, I think in my opinion, it, it is. Um, there's a lot of applications out there that kind of throw, you know, throw the book at the problem and they, they allow you to do everything. Um, and we just wanted to start with something like really simple. We just want to get them digitized or if they are digitized like they are in let's say google sheets let's just put them in in a spot where their herd records are um because that's really the foundation that's the starting point and you know right now a lot of people right they're taking pictures maybe of their animals or their receipts or something that happens out in the field um, and then it's just in their camera roll with um, a bunch of other images and right, they're having to like scroll and find that information or search through old SMS or, you know, their, their coal list that they're building is right next to their uh, grocery shopping list, you know, and it's just like, we're literally just trying to start from, you know, ground zero and build a very easy way for people just to kind of start putting that into, um, into that digital format. And yeah, I, we'll, we'll have to get more and more structured as we go. And we'll figure out the things that are most useful and provide the most impact. And there already is quite a bit of structure in there mm -hmm. um, that if people do want to capture weights and report off those things like Keenan's saying, it, it, I think it offers kind of the best of both worlds. Right. And I mean, I've been in the app a fair amount. And from what I see, I mean, there's value for really any cattle producer who's wanting to collect data right now, whether it's as simple as just tag and birth date, or if you want to go into sex and weight and um, dam information, sire information, health records, there are a lot of options there, which is really useful. And personally, being the younger generation on an operation, I love the digital records aspect, but having a place where both my parents and myself can see the same thing is really valuable because otherwise it's like, well, I would text mom that a new calf was born and then she'd put it in the records, but it was like, I never had the full sheet or, you know, we'd have one printed off and it was just a lot of extra steps. And sometimes handwriting would get in the way, or if uh, someone wrote a note on their hand and then that would accidentally get washed off. So there's a lot of different opportunities um, for ag tech to make the beef industry more efficient. And on that line, Alex, what do you see, how do you see ag tech being the most beneficial to operations um, as it relates to their bottom line? Where do you think those um, big areas of help are for cattle producers? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. It's, it's an exploding area. Um, there's a lot of, you know, investment and opportunities finally coming um, to the segment. Um, you know, I think I guess one thing I will say is like, I think assess the costs and, you know, weigh the benefits so they know what their ROI um, is and kind of do that on an ongoing basis to make sure that the things in ag tech that they're investing in um, do actually provide them value. Um, but 
you know, at the, at the same time, like don't stand, don't sit on the sidelines. Um, I think take advantage of, um, you know, what is out there um, so that you can help create the direction of, of what ag tech is um, so that you can, um, you know, find uh, the biggest ROI for, um, you know, help influence the direction uh, for the, to help you find the biggest ROI for your operation. Cause I think everybody's needs are different. Um, but I mean, you know, the biggest opportunity, I think just starts with tracking it and tracking it in a, in a digital way. And then, um, you know, just seeing those things year after year, um, you know, we're seeing it already where uh, we put people's historical data in and we're already um, helping them find, um, you know, new insights that um, were really difficult to um, understand back when it was, you know, pen and paper and, mm -hmm. you know, they were, everybody was tracking it, but the data was just going on a, on a bookshelf, but now actually having it kind of in this one uniform place. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think I really answered like how they can find the best impact, but I think just testing and, and trying different things is, is probably really important yeah. to be open to that. And if I can hop in here real quick, that's all right. Like from the tech side in our current modern era, right? Data is knowledge and knowledge is power. And whether that be looking inward for operations, right? Looking at their own like herds year over year, or whether it be like outward where, you know, things might not be tight now, but having accountability in previous records can help you in the future. There's a little bit of insight as well as hedging that is involved in having this data. It helps you also then democratize the data. You can bring it all together, bring it out to other people, improve accountability, give yourself some more power when you come to the table with specific individuals, right? And that all starts here, as Alex mentioned, with that like central repository of information. You don't want to be sitting in a meeting with someone trying to get a loan and having to scroll through your text to remember who you texted on that day to make sure that the animal was right. You just want it there. Uh, and I think that this is a key step towards that. Absolutely. And the data conversation has been brought up multiple times in the past six months on this show um, for multiple different businesses and producers. And when we look at the tight margins in the cow calf industry as they are, you know, you look at the number one input for so many producers is that feed cost. But next to that, oftentimes it can be open cows. So even being able to track which cows are breeding late or calving late, which ones are coming up open or which ones just aren't producing calves that weigh up. That's, that's big for producers to be able to pull that up and see so that they can have the highest performing herd that they need. Exactly. So kind of shifting gears a little bit. So Alex and Keenan, you talked about how you kind of decide what features are on the app and what that looks like for producers and why they're in there. But what I'm curious about is, so me as a beef producer, as an app user, when I'm on there, say there's a malfunction in the app and, you know, like say I enter a birth weight and for some reason that field doesn't work. And, you know, I submit that there's an error so that someone like Keenan would know, but Keenan, what does that look like on your end to try and fix that error? Because yeah. I only see the working side, right? So I don't understand, like, and sometimes it's nice to understand a little bit of the full side of it. So what does that look like for you as far as like, how much time does it take? How much testing is it? <laughs> What's that? Totally. Yeah. And that's um, the fun thing with a lot of app development is that it might be something that seems innocuous on the surface and then you dig deeper and it is, uh, it's a big one. But typically what happens in the flow is, right, luckily we are small enough and agile enough that we can get a bug com that comes in. What we'll do is you do your good old triage. You say, how severe is this? You'll hear some phrases I might throw out there where you have different environments, right? Like I write all of my code for the app locally, right? I have a computer where I essentially have a copy of everything that is out there, like on your phone, minus the data. We're not going to copy your data. That's yours. You keep that. 
Um, but we keep that locally, right? So I can, I can do things on the fly and test. Then what typically we will do is we take that and we move that to an area called development. That's kind of between the world of on my computer and fully out in the open world. That lets us start working on things like, let's say, for example, that date bug. I could go in locally, see what's wrong with it locally, see if I can find the bug, fix it, and then test it in dev. So I can push it. And then the other people that are also working on this with me all test it and confirm that what I found works. And then once we have that, we get to turn and say, all right, go, go be fixed out there in the open world. So that's typically the process that it will go through to actually get out. Now, if it, there are a couple of things, if it's a severe enough thing, I will hop on any hour of the day, fix it and get something out there, right? That's, and if it gets triaged that level, yes. If not, it can be anywhere typically from a 24 hour turnaround to unfortunately, if you have to work with the app stores, right? We, we love the fact that you can just go to the app store and download an app. But for developers, what that means is that sometimes if we have to make like a small fix that's in the app, we have to like go through this process of getting it found, tested, like verified and then pushed. And then we have to go like put it in our hands, walk up to the app store and say, hey, can you please um, send this out to everybody for us? And so that distribution piece can typically take anywhere from 24 hours to three days, depending on whether it's Android or iOS. Um, okay. So that's why you, yeah. So it's like, it, the big thing for us is that triaging step. Let's sit down, let's see what is exploding. Let's see how quick we can fix it. And then we'll deal with the other steps after. So from your side, as a techie or head nerd, as you described yourself mm -hmm. earlier, what do you wish cattle producers knew or understood about the ag tech space? Mm. I think something that is both good and bad, a good old double-edged sword here, is that the ag tech space is really fast pace right now. It is reaching a very beautiful point where technology is flooding in. Things are being introduced that haven't been there before that involve many new technologies mm -hmm. right here. Apps, blockchain, I don't, whatever you, whatever modern buzzwords you want to hear. And that's great because that means that a lot of time, money, and investment is being made into the field. But at the same time, there's an understanding of what it means to be on the bleeding edge of technology. Things are rapidly changing. Con like constant feedback is actually like loved and encouraged. Right? Talk to us. Tell us what we did that you don't like and do like, and we will try to just get on it. We want to make sure that those turnaround times are maybe not months as things used to be, but we can get it down to like days and maybe weeks. Right? And so I think that's the big thing I want them to just take away is that because of this new space, Ag tech is like on the bleeding edge. <laughs> it, it is here, it is changing, and it is going to grow. So, Alex, what do you want cattle producers to understand about being in or about using technology on their operations and implementing that? Yeah, I think I think even what Keenan just said about feedback is is so important. And um, us as a early stage company with a you know with an early stage product, like we need and want as much of that feedback as possible, and we will we'll always take it. Um, we're constantly using it. We're always listening to our customers, um, and always taking uh, what what we learn from them—the good, the bad, and the ugly—and um, turning that into uh, you know new value for them. So, I guess. Um, from my perspective, like we we want to see as many producers um, adopting technology as possible and also just being open to communicating with us as frequently as possible. And I will say like as one awesome thing about this industry is like they're not maybe always easy to get a hold of because they're busy and in the field and may not have service. But like at the end of the day, their doors are always wide open. I mean, Keenan has gone to a few events already with me. Um, we did um, a preg checking event a couple months ago. We've gone to some other producers' houses. Like the doors are wide open. So like, thank you and uh, continue to do that because it makes our job 
easy and hopefully, um, you know, helps us deliver something of value quicker. Well, that's exciting. And, uh, yet again, another common theme that gets shared on the show about the beef industry. It's certainly welcoming and supportive, and that's really exciting to see, especially as these new technologies come into place. So as we kind of wrap up our conversation today, do either of you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with the cattle producers out there listening, whether it relates to cattle ID or how they can work with any ag tech company a little better and make their lives easier? Tower, we are here to build something for you. It is, it is not you doing something for us. So please reach out, let us know what we can do for you. Or honestly, reach out if you just want to chat about tech. I am here and can talk about it for days. And especially now that I've uh, dove into the ag tech world, let's talk. Um, so thank you all for like listening and giving us the time we do have today. Well, awesome. Thank you both for being on the show today and diving into what it looks like to be in the ag tech space and to help cattle producers understand what technology can do for their operations and how they can best work with any ag tech company out there. Because uh, what'd you say, Keenan? Data is knowledge and knowledge is power. And uh, But in order to get there, you guys need feedback on your end. So there we go. Yeah, let's work together. Yep. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shay. Thank you, Shay. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Thank you for tuning in today and joining in on the conversation. Be sure to take this a step further and take the advice you learned and implement it on your operation. If you want to have a conversation about it, head over to my social media and send me a DM by following at Cattle Convos and connecting with me there. Have a great day.